your whole thing. Um, but like you, I'm always trying to improve things. So I'm thinking of ways to be just a little bit stronger. Uh, some of my friends have commented about my um, idea that even 1 dB is important. And the reason why I say that is 1 dB here, 1 dB over there. Now we're talking 2 or 3 dB and, you're, and I'm twice as strong. Um, along those lines, one of the things that you might think about is having an antenna with some gain. And there are thousands uh, of antennas that have some gain uh, in, in some direction. Along those lines, let's pretend like this is our um, isotropic radiator. It, <clears throat> this light bulb radiates in all directions equally well. Now, I know it doesn't, and you know it doesn't, but we'll pretend. If we were to put a mirror here and reflect the light that way, the light going that way would be brighter because we've taken some of the light from this side and sent it that way. We have reflected it that direction. <clears throat> if we took a magnifying glass and put it here uh, and had the uh, mirror over here, we could then focus that light into uh, a, a much tighter spot. So if we were to plot uh, the pattern of that light bulb, we could probably get it down to some kind of a circular area. And again, that would be gain. We haven't increased the power to the antenna. The antenna hasn't magically made more power, but it's taken the light from all directions and focused it in one direction. And we call that gain. Now, if this was a Yagi, which is a really brilliant antenna, this would be the driven element. Uh, the, the mirror over here would be the reflector. Uh, and the uh, magnifying glass out here would be uh, one of the directors. There could be more. In other words, you could have one magnifying glass shooting into another magnifying glass into another magnifying glass. And there are computer programs that will tell us uh, the length of that element and its position for maximized gain or you could tune it for maximize front to back, or you could tune it for some combination thereof with weight towards front to back, or it could be low SWR. Could be you want the antenna to cover the whole band, so that would be a lower Q or lower efficiency antenna. Um, this, we'll call it isotropic radiator, is kind of the model for a lot of antenna programs because it radiates equally well in all directions. Compared to a dipole, which has about 2.14 dB gain because it has, has a pattern, uh, it has a pattern uh, broadside uh, if it's a uh, half wavelength long. What's the point? Well, let's look at the Yagi antenna and how smart that antenna is and, and how well it works. And then let's look at rotators, because when you go for something that has a lot of gain and we'll call it directionality, it's going to radiate in a direction for the most part. Well, now you've excluded all of the other areas. So if you can put a rotator underneath it and turn it different directions, then you can move that, that uh, gain and increase signal into a, into a specific direction. Um, for me, it might be uh, pointing the antenna towards Europe or towards Africa. Um, how much gain? In a simple three element Yagi, probably in the neighborhood of just round numbers, just very round, 6 dB. So that's 3 dB plus 3 dB. Each 3 dB is double. So 6 dB is an S unit and four times stronger. Uh, stations off the back of the antenna, the front to back, that ratio sometimes can be as much as 20 dB on some antennas. 20 dB is a 1 and 2 zero, so that'd be 1, zero, zero, or 100 times weaker. So stations off the direct back of the antenna would be 100, 100 times weaker. Stations in the front of the antenna would be 4 times stronger, and you would be 4 times stronger. It's reciprocal. Um, so I built a, uh, a representation of a 3-element Yagi. I shot some video of me turning it with uh, with a rotator so let's look at that now uh, and again keep in mind that uh, Yagis can be configured in lots of different ways uh, the hex beam 
uh, for example, is not exactly a Yagi, but the, some of the concepts are there. Um, a hex beam, for example, is incredibly light, less than 20 pounds. Front to back, not as great as a Yagi, could be um, 20, 30 times. Uh, gain, not as much, maybe doubles a gain in, in a given direction. But doubling the gain is great. Remember we talked about uh, picking up a dB or 3 dB. Heck, if you can pick up 3 dB by pointing the antenna in a certain direction, that's wonderful. All right, let's look at the video I shot uh, in my storeroom of the rotators, uh, the high gain and uh, Yesu rotators, and my mock-up of a uh, three-element Yagi. So here we go. So here's my mock-up of a Yagi antenna, and I've got it on a rotator, so I'm going to press the buttons here. This would be pretty typical of what a three element tribander might look like. Um, this element, which is off, let's see, this one, which is off camera, is um, is the uh, uh, director driven element and reflector. Now, again, it's just a mock up. Um, the way these things work is really simple. Uh, this is basically a dipole and it can be fed in a number of ways. It can be shorted to the boom. It can be insulated from the boom. Um, it tends to be slightly low in impedance. So this is um, cut to the frequency that you're going to be operating on, frequencies. This would be the reflector, which is, as it sounds, um, is pushing the RF the other direction. Uh, it's generally closer space than the uh, director, so director, reflector, um, typically something on the order of 3 to 5% longer. Uh, the first director, sometimes there's more than one, um, is also in the range of 3 to 5% typically. Could be more, could be less. There can be lots of directors. Uh, oftentimes, um, you'll talk to guys who have more than... Uh, two or three elements, they may have five or six, so these get spaced uh, based upon computer modeling and their size changes just a bit. If we were to take three pieces of tubing, attach it to a boom, make this one about 3% longer, that one about 3% shorter, feed this thing in the middle with uh, some kind of, could be a gamma match, could be any, any number of things, and it would work. Um, how well would it work? Pretty well. Antenna like this might have um, 6 dB gain. That maybe is a stretch, but uh, something in that neighborhood. 6 dB gain is about an S unit. Um, front to back. What happens when you turn the antenna? What happens when you turn the antenna around and the back of the antenna is facing a station you don't want to you don't want to hear you don't want to interfere with the front to back on an antenna like this could be as much as 20 db so that's a one and two zeros of, as we've discussed before so that's 100 times weaker off the back um, that station now is decreased and even more if uh, the antenna is turned so that the side of the antenna So the side get whacked in the head. So the side of the antenna is um, away from a station that you don't want to interfere with. Um, these are parts and pieces from a high gain antenna. The rotator, which I'll show you in just a minute, is also a high gain. I've got one open. Um, this is probably 40 years old. Uh, it does not have a brake mechanism. It, it relies on the gear reduction of the motor. So it's not real good. Uh, for big antennas, but for turning small antennas, it's great. Um, I don't know how long it takes to turn the antenna, maybe a minute for full rotation. The other really popular brand is um, Yesu, and they have a couple of changes, uh, improvements in my view. Um, from the, uh, the high gain telex, and this is a Yesu rotator. Um, 
The control box has a couple of features, and that is it has a speed control, so you can speed up the antenna or slow it down. Uh, as it approaches the point where it's supposed to stop, it starts to slow down. You can preset, you could tell it to, you could uh, preset it to go to due north, push a button, it'll rotate towards north. As it gets to just about north, it starts to slow down and, uh, and it stops. Um, their control boxes also rotate the antenna uh, 450 degrees, so it's 360 plus 90, which gives you a lot of overlap. Uh, the pointers also can be, it's got like a motor to turn the thing, you can take the, the pointer off and move it. Here's the guts of a, um, uh, a Ham M TR44 type rotator. Uh, this gizmo on the top is a potentiometer. As the antenna rotates, uh, the bell housing is attached to that, and that changes resistance, which moves the meter to indicate its position. There's a lot of gears in the thing, um, so there's a lot of gear reduction going on. The motor is actually pretty small. It reminded me of, a, of an old phonograph motor. It's not, uh, it's not real big. It's not for a phonograph, but it's still... Not that big. I believe they use the same motor in each of the rotator designs. Anyway, that's a quick look at, um, and the control box looks uh, a bit like that. Has a meter on the front that indicates direction, um, indicates its position. There are switches to decide if you want to go left or right or clockwise and count or counterclockwise. Um, it's a great way to focus the signal towards a, um, a particular part of, uh, of the planet. So if you wanted to talk to the East Coast, you can point the antenna towards the East Coast. If you want to try to work Europe, you can put the antenna to the North and uh, see if you can work uh, or hear Europeans. Um, in my case, I'm using two Yaggies like this uh, on separate towers and they're, they're phased together. The Yagi antenna is just genius. It's so simple. A little bit longer, a little bit shorter, and the thing has gain in a given direction. Um, there's some canceling that goes on so that off the back of the antenna, uh, signals are down a lot. And off the front of the antenna, there is some gain. All right, that's a quick look at rotators and Yagi antennas. Thanks for watching. I'm Jim, W6LG for Ham Radio Basics. If you have a question, post it below. If you know the answer to a question, please uh, post that too. Um, if you have the opportunity, please subscribe. Look forward to seeing you on the next one. Thanks. Whiskey 6 Lima, calling CQO.